This podcast provides a platform that will share many different points of views that should empower you, uplift you, make you want to go out and do right. When you hear the term still a man, say, yes, I am. Still a man. Yes, I am. Still a man. Yes, I am. Let's go. What's up, people? Welcome to another episode of the Still a Man podcast. Well, they're at it again. We get got in the house, uh, man. police officers misbehaving, acting badly, um, and to no surprise, it's from people's favorite uh town, favorite state. Um, I'm just gonna say. This is uh KKK country, Mississippi. Where is it in the house? Um, so all right, let's get started. Tonight's topic is Mississippi Goon Squad cover up. Um, again, like I said, this is Mississippi. Seems to be to the center of our uh, bad behavior, uh, white supremacy, and you know, white pride and uh, just basically bad behavior. Um, it's, it's just not good. And if y'all thought that the other stuff was bad, wait until you hear this stuff. All right, so tell me, guys, what do you know about um the Mississippi Goon Squad? Have you ever heard of them? Um, did you see the latest video? Um, let's start with Kiana. Kiana, what do you know about the Mississippi Goon Squad? I never heard of them before until um the show they had us watch. All right, so we all gonna get an in-depth education about these people. But again, like I said, I, I don't think that this is going to be any surprise to many of us that uh frequent the panel, that participate on the panel, because we've had in-depth conversations about this type of behavior. Patsy, what do you know about the Mississippi Goon Squad? Uh, this is the first time I heard it, the term. But basically, cops that are supposed to be out there protecting and serving the people are acting badly, which is not a new thing. Yes, yes. Basically, bottom line. Unfortunately, those that took an oath to serve and protect are the first to impose a threat. And threat pertaining to people of color and minorities. Um and just them even. So let's let's Maria, what do you know about the Mississippi Goon Squad? Um, I know nothing about it, but um just knowing that I've seen the video. My question is, was they actually named the Goon Squad or less, or people just started calling them that because of what they did? They they named themselves that because they felt that they wasn't afraid to use uh, uh, force. Violence. That's, that's, that's what they said. So they yeah. so so the police officers are walking around calling themselves goons. Yeah, they're yeah. basically uh, uh, a gang, and unfortunately, their color just happens to be. That's what they really are, right? Um, They've been saying that. Let's let's go on. But do you know what goon means? Yeah, that's why they a, goon, a right terrorist. Uh, yeah, goon is no a goon is a stupid. And, foolish person. Well, again, doesn't that sound like a bunch of idiots? Yeah. Well, well a, lot is, of, yeah. a lot of people might, they, a lot of people don't, you know, probably don't even know that. They just think it, it sounds like, a, you know, like the the, uh, the scary movies, movies, ghouls and goblins and that's that's the way they looking at goons at well, that's, that's, like the scary. 
I don't think that I don't think that you guys are far off the point. I think the, the the term goon that their purpose for picking that name is to invoke fear. That's mm -hmm. that's, that's that's what their intention is, is to do. To be right. scary. Um, Gregory, what do you know about the goon squad? Um, I don't know much about these booty thugs. Hmm. Okay. Uh, welcome they back. They booty bandits. That's what they are. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so, Bert, how you feeling, Bert? I'm all right. I'm home. All right. That's that's good. One more down. Huh? Blessings upon you. Blessings be upon you. Uh, what do you what do you know about this goon squad? I'm not familiar with it at all. I tried to, I don't know. I'm not, I guess I'm not up to date in what's going on in the world because that don't really do nothing for me or phase me. So yeah, I'm kind of illiterate to it. All right, we're gonna you're gonna get up to date like everybody else. Um but again, like I said, um you're not you're not that much in the dark as you think. It's like uh you would think at this point in, in our lives in the world that people would behave differently, but they're still choosing to behave badly. Elijah, what do you know about the uh, Mississippi Goon Squad? Yeah, yeah. He, he said he was coming back. We'll come back. We'll come back to him. Sean, what do you know about the Mississippi Goon Squad? Yes, um, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm just now learning what everyone has been saying tonight. This, this is my uh, first time actually hearing about them. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear, to see these videos. Okay. Um, Timmy, what do you know about them? I don't know nothing about them, but it ain't surprising. Hmm. Okay. So did I get everybody this on here right now? So guys, just help me out if anybody else new joins in, then we'll bring them up to speed. Um, all right, so let me give you guys a quick rundown. So apparently the Goon Squad is somebody they they named themselves self-confessed. They this is what they refer to themselves as. Um some of the people in the uh uh what you call it, the Mississippi area, I think they refer to them as uh, the murder squad or death squad or something like that. Um, so again, it's not um, ingratiating. It's, it's not something that they they bring about warm fuzzy feelings. There there is to uh, make people afraid. So these individuals decided on uh, an evening of leisure to get together and bring about a particular type of violence. And unfortunately, these uh, six white men decided to make their target, target of choice, uh, black men. And just so we don't get it twisted, this is not by chance. This is something that this group it's you got Robert thing. You didn't call on Robert. Um, I, I'll call on him when I finish. Thanks. Um, so this is something that these guys have done on a regular basis, and now it's just coming to head again. Uh, you know that that is done in the dark always comes to light, and in this situation, now someone um basically. Pour the curtains open on them. Just rip the curtains down, so now you can see them and all their ugly. Um, Grimmich, what do you know about the Goon Squad? He's on mute. All right, guys, we got a lot to cover tonight. So when I call upon you, and if you don't answer, I'm gonna just go to the next person. Go on. Catch them in, right. and they tell me. Um, so. You know what? Let's get some video um support. Uh, Gregory, you ready? Yes, sir. I don't know if you called upon me. I had a crisis. All right, so we'll we'll come back to you after the video. Um, so Gregory, 
The first video that we're gonna show tonight is the um the Goon Squad and their cover up. You ready? Anybody mute your phones and please hold on to your responses until after the video is over. Five former Rankin County deputies, including the chief investigator and a former police officer with the Ridgeland Police Department, they're all admitting their role in the cover-up after the crime. Goon squad in the hot seat, shackled and handcuffed with duct tape, concealing which county jail they're being held at. Six former white Rankin County law enforcement officers led into a courtroom to plead guilty on state charges and what prosecutors call a racist torture session and sexual assault of two black men. The victims, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, both in the courtroom to witness what their attorney called an historic moment. We are ecstatic because to my uh, knowledge, never in the history of Mississippi uh, have, uh, in particular, white officers been held to account for brutality against uh, black victims. Former Rankin County Chief Investigator Brett McAlpin Lieutenant Jeffrey Middleton, Christian Detman, who was a narcotics officer, Deputy Daniel Updike, and former Richland officer Joshua Hartfield all pleading guilty to hindering prosecution and conspiracy to hinder prosecution. Authorities say the group tried to hatch a scheme to cover up the crime, destroy evidence, plus plan a weapon and drugs on the victims. Authorities say former Deputy Hunter Elbert shot Michael Jenkins in the mouth after Jenkins had been handcuffed and tased. Elward pleaded guilty to aggravated assault, burglary, home invasion, and hindering prosecution. I enjoyed uh, the view of seeing uh, the same, the walk of shame, the, uh, the head down, the disgust that uh, everybody that felt, you know, for them and uh, that they feel for themselves. I hope um, this is a lesson to uh, everybody out there. Justice will be served. Investigators say the goon squad targeted Jenkins and Parker after they got a call about a house in the Braxton community on January 24th. They accused the men of taking advantage of the white woman whose house they were living in. Based on the new plea deals, most of the defendants won't spend much time in state prison. That's raising questions about whether the disgraced former law officers are getting off easy. Uh, being given 10 years or recommended 10 years with, uh, 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 with five years suspended or 15 years with 10 years suspended for uh, assaulting someone, for murdering some, I mean, for uh, shooting someone in the mouth, for tasing someone, for torturing someone, we know that that's not true justice. Now, the six defendants will be sentenced on state charges later this year. They're also awaiting sentencing on federal charges. One interesting thing to note, federal prosecutors say there were members of the so-called goon squad who were not present the night when Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker were assaulted. For now, we're live at the Rankin County Courthouse in Brandon, Ross Adams, 16 WAPT News. <laughs> All right, let's get right to it. Let's talk about it. Since Robbie was the last person to join us, let's give him first dibs at, uh, you know, these individuals. Robbie, talk about it. What's your point of view? What's your perspective? How do you feel about the video? How do you feel about these uh, sexual deviants? I mean, how do you feel about this whole goon squad cover up? Uh, once again, another sickening crime against, you know, people of color. I think that those officers was gay because the act of um, their um, sexual assault to black men, it just speaks volumes of um your sexual preference. This is something I think you guys have been doing for a while and just happened to got caught or you know the people spoke out about it. it for them to far. get a basically a slap on a wrist. That's when when I first discovered it, it was like justice was being brought against them and um Right now, and I'm sitting there like, what the hell is this? What they giving them? That don't add up to anything. That's that's not that's not well, giving they, those that's well, not giving those men mean, their sanity back. It's not it's not replacing anything they took from them on that night. They took their being shot in the their, mouth, their, their manhood. They they did a lot of things to those two black men that cannot be replaced. 
So before yeah, it ain't no yet. They, 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 they still go, got the before they still got the face the federal charges. So you know they might got off on the state, but they probably ain't going to get off on the federal. All right, guys. Before we go any further, let me be clear about this. Let me put this disclaimer up there. All right, the views of the uh, panel members are the views of the panel members alone. They no way are uh, reflect or um, sway the opinions of the Still a Man platform or podcast. That being said, uh, <coughs> continue. And guys, please let people get their um, statements out. Let them finish before we comment on so we can hear what everyone has to say. All right, Timmy, let's go to you next. Yeah, and like I said, they they got they 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 got five five years, ten years is suspended. Okay, but but then they also are facing federal charges. You know, so okay, they might have got off with just five in 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 the state. But they might get more in the federal. Hmm. Could I just add this real quick? Um, you give them a five and ten. So whatever federal gives them, say federal say, okay, um, we're gonna give them eight. You gotta think all of these years that they're getting is gonna be at the same time. It's not like you do five and then we're gonna start you with the ten and then you do eight. When they're doing their five, that's five out of the ten. And then they got five more. No, so they had fifteen. It, it was fifteen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not. They got. They gave them fifteen. They no, gave them fifteen. They they suspended them, right? They, they suspended ten. They had fifteen. They suspended ten. They got five. Everybody. All right, but at listen. The same time. Make me clear on this. Do the five years start first, and then after five years go by, they start ten more years. Or are they no, doing no, no. five? That's, that's right. They're, they're straight up doing five years. That's right. Understand what I'm saying. So it's, it's not it's not adding up. It never does. Yeah, but but when they they're gonna have to do federal. See, you you either the federal you could do state time and then the federal come and get you to do their do their time. That's if they that's if they're found um guilty. Depends on with um with with excuse me, they already uh they plead there on oh, double jeopardy. You can't charge them twice. That's right. Okay. The, okay. Now, 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 now that they got a federal charge, the, feds, the state the feds, and federal are totally different. The feds would have took over the federal yeah, supersede. The they would have took over the right. case they first. Take all, exactly. That's what I was about. Yeah, but they they still but you, they happen. said they still got a federal charge. They still Pending. got federal. Pending. I'll say it again. It ain't adding up. Pending. All right, Fur. Let's get your perspective on this. How you feel about this video? I mean, the rapist part is some old slave shit. Mm. Mm -mm. That's the old slave slave massive behavior. They hate you and beat you, but they rape you. Mm -hmm. So I don't even it is what it is. Castrate them. Scrape their sexual just like any other rapist or child molester. You need to take away that sensation in your brain and abide by control. that. Scrape it. You don't even yep. need to have sexual Castrate. feelings or thoughts no more. Yeah. Castrate them, right. Yeah. Look at Pulp Fiction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Physically castrate him plus like medically. Uh I, I think he's no I, I physically he's calling for physical he needs and mental. He wants he, he wants them to remove the sex organ and remove something from their brain that gives them that's right. The, 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 the part of your brain that triggered triggered your sexual feelings. Absolutely. You you proud. Take that right out. Clip it. Poke him in the eyeball. Mm. <laughs> in the house too. Uh, welcome, welcome, Gregory. Let's get your perspective on it. How you feel about the um, you know, the video and the cover up? I mean, we well, basically, let's talk about this because we didn't even talk about the cover up part of it. But um, how you feel about that video? No, I feel like what Bird was just saying. They was trying to buck break these men. 
because they were sleeping with the master's wife or some something like that. And, and they, they, they were aroused to do that. That's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let, um, gentlemen, let's be clear about this. They said there were sex toys. I don't know if they, they said maybe, they um, used sex toys on these men. And, and, and I think it was they on. waterboarded them. What think, the heck? And was, then even after they did all of that, they tried to plant drugs in a gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is wild. Like, like how people are crazy. Like they, no one's gonna believe it. That's that's. And you know why they shot one in the mouth because he wasn't sucking on a toy as good oh, as the other one was. Um, let's get, <laughs> let's not, let's Sean, not let's get your perspective about this. Uh, oh, this is terrible, Sean. Let's get your perspective on the video, ladies. I can. I just can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Go ahead, John. Yeah, it's, it's a bit much, man. Um, like I said, I, I mm. lost for words. Yeah, this this type of stuff really irritates me. It, it, really it irritates does. Me. It really does. It doesn't and, surprise me though. And to be, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. But, it does, but exactly. The, 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 the the audacity that they have and the gall and the and the like if they didn't get caught just mm -hmm. knowing that we can do this mm -hmm. and okay with doing it. You know, and then I'm I, I take it a little step further that yeah they're caught, they're gonna do whatever time they're gonna do, but then when they get inside how was the inside going to treat them as far as looking at them as heroes where they're like oh, no. serving their time like it ain't no issue? Yeah. Because, <laughs> again, that's KKK country. And if KKK country, and if they um if, if they house them there in Mississippi, yeah, they probably will be receiving. Oh, they're going to be on vacation. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, or like you, might get, you might get uh, people... That they don't really like them pigs, they say. We don't like the pig, man. From Any my pig. understanding of Mississippi, this guy that lived down there that I work with told me that there's a white side and there's a black side. Yeah, so of course these white, white people are going to court on the white side. I'm pretty sure that there's not going to be no people there in the jury that don't like the pigs. Mm hmm. All right, um, Elijah. I'm talking about those? inside the damn jailhouse. They go in the jail. Elijah, are you back with us? No, time is in the house. All right, uh, Tanya, let's bring you up to speed tonight. We are talking about the Mississippi Goon Squad cover up and their uh, nefarious uh, sexual deviant behavior. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to uh, watch the video, but we just did, and we're getting people's perspective. So did I? Before I go to Tanya, did I get all the guys? I got Timmy, I got Robert, I got um Bird, I Bird. got John, I got Gregory. All right, yeah. that's so no more guys. All right, let's go nope. to the ladies and let's start with um Tanya. Tanya, you ready to share? No, can you go to another lady? Yes, I will. All right, Patsy, let's get your perspective on it. I know you um, responded to some of the things the guys were saying, but let's get your perspective on it. All of it is really sick and, and really sad, and they should be getting more time on top of what they, they mm -hmm. are. Like that 10-year that cut off of the 15 years, Mm -hmm. Now, if it was, if it was any one of us as civilians instead of being a cop, do you think we can, would have kind of got out in a 10 years and shaved off our sense of thing? No. We yeah. would have never got that shaving off. I think so that's... their behinds should, because like they're is supposed to be elevated um, to a higher standard, they should have got over the standard um, timing that any one of us would have had put on to, on us if we we did that crime. See, they should have set an should've example. Five to ten years instead of taking that mess off. 
It's crazy mm-hmm. because when they yeah. first, when they first, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. That shows you like how well the clan is um cheated down there mm-hmm. in the mindset, you know. I don't mm-hmm. think that's the clan, man. I don't think I don't know if those guys are part of the clan. Yeah, the clan you know, is about white power. No, no you got right. That might be some other it, backyard it, 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 Mississippi <laughs> slave <laughs> trade <laughs> rapist clan. No, but no, I would no, just no, believe no, the KKK. No, 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 guys. You in the clan no, 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 the, the clan yourself, or you just associated they, with they, the clan, even if you're not in the clan? A couple of the members. Or have affiliation people that was in the goon squad. One of the they gave you the names of, of one of the people that had connection. I guess the lawyer, when the lawyer was speaking on it, the um the victim's lawyer, he told you he, the ones that have affiliation whose family members are card carrying members of the KKK. Um, so yes, don't don't get it twisted. There there was a racial um uh, agenda. You know, um, involved. It, it it had to do with um again, uh, tearing down um the black man and the need to build up uh those uh white men in that in that situation. They tried to emasculate them. Uh, you know, take away their manhood. You know, they, they did tried, all that. They, they tried to mess yeah. them up. Uh, Kiana, I know you're waiting to jump in, so go on. The water's nice. Uh. Um, I don't know about the water is nice. Um, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's indicative of Mississippi. And I'm pretty sure that this was not their first offense or that, they, they, I mean, they ran the police, um, the whole, from the um, deputy on the way down, they ran that city. So they were, they ran a muck probably in that in city, still do. Um, in for you, the goon squad, <clears throat> right? Go ahead. Um, and I think it's disgusting that they, you know, had to use any. I mean, some of the stuff that y'all are talking about, I don't know. I, I might have to, I don't want to watch the video again, but I didn't hear some of this stuff. I'm like, was I watched the video once on my own, and then this time, I'm like, where the hell was that information? Uh-huh. But it's, um, it's really sick that they felt the need to emasculate these men and torture them and you know the the sentences don't fit the crimes at all and Mm -hmm. i'm just hoping that federal will will um will achieve the goal better no will achieve the goal yeah will achieve the the perp i mean the i mean you shot somebody he could have died i mean He's he's paralyzed in the mouth. No, he split his tongue and shot in his like. No, no, no. He just got a numb face. His 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 face is numbed on that side still. What he did was, um, they said he like he 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 split his tongue and shattered the side of his neck. It broke his jaw, elastic his tongue, and exited out his neck. Yeah. So okay. Well, again, these, these these men will never be the same yeah, um, we, as they were in the yeah, the mm-hmm. state charges. Do not fit those crimes at all. So, nope. Uh, Lord, hoping that the federal cases um, complete what state didn't do, but we know why the state didn't do because the state of Mississippi probably thinks that none of that was wrong, so they're nope. trash. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they 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 won't be the same mentally or physically. Nope. You can just nope. tell by looking at the video of them that you know they they took their they manhood them. from them that they don't even want to look directly into the camera because the world knows that you've no. been assaulted yeah. in such of a way, like okay. which is very demeaning to a man. Or anybody to be put through that type of t- um torture, like I don't know what these people was thinking. And like Kiana said, you better believe it wasn't a first time doing that. 
This is just the first time they got caught. Yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. what I try to tell y'all. And, and, and why did they conceal? Why did they conceal what what um jail they was being held at? Oh, you, because you they don't out. want the people to start a riot, or you know these police officers end up getting killed. No. Yep. All right, so um, Tanya, let's get your perspective. Um, how you felt about the video? The vi- the video was horrible. Mm-hmm. It was it was horrible. It took it. It's indicative of slavery, like Bird said. And and they was they wasn't charged with a hate crime for the state, so the federal oh. can pick it up as a hate crime. That's right. That's right. You did. You did not. Re- you did not hear them refer to it as a hate crime, even though we all know that's exactly what it was. But continue. Continue, Tanya. I think she might be having difficulty. Can I ask this though? Is I, there I'm any sorry, amount? I'm sorry. I have to mute. I have to mute. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. So they didn't charge. They wasn't charged for a hate crime for the state. And it's, it's just really sad. It's really sad that people in this day and age is still, they're really trying to take us back in time. Uh-huh. That's exactly what they're trying to they're do. They're trying to take us back in time. Um. All right, so did I get everybody? Hold on, Uncle D, can I ask this? Is there any, really any amount of time that could make somebody pay for these type of crimes? If- I don't, I don't, These people got to be removed from society. I, so well, they're suing. They're suing the some state. nasty work. They suing thing. the state. They're going to get paid. Both of them should get about five. I, I don't or, think, or, I or think you could they put probably a get a million and a half. That's all. That's see that you're, you're lowballing them. No pun yeah. intended, but you're lowballing them when you say one point five. I don't think you yeah. put price on what happened to them. You can't. You can't return their insanity, excuse me, their sanity um, to what it was beforehand. Now let's let's just even let's put this in part of the equation. The level of preconditioning that takes place within Mississippi for the black man to begin with. They they as that man said, I thought I was doing everything to avoid um having these type of encounters with the law, and this still befall befell me. And what do you do? So now you got these people, not only where you say they don't want to look directly into the camera, I think that has a lot to do with the fact with they where they was raised in that town, they in that area. They know what happens. You don't listen, the the um hate for black people is still real down there. Now we we yeah. all talk about some of the stuff that happened to these men. We'll just take out the sexual assault. They they threw eggs at these men. Yeah. They they waterboard um waterboarded them, which which the military has ruled um uh what they call um inhumane. That's torture. But, 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 they do that in Guatemala, but but you got these people doing that, practicing um uh those techniques, those strategies. Um, right, that's, that's what do. the government does with their uh the the. The military do that to to the the captives that they when they get the, they torture them, make them tell them what what they know. They beat them. And yeah, they beat under, them. And this is all under the pretense that these men were living there, taking advantage of this white woman. Now, and they said this was the crime, the alleged crime. The call in was from another uh, white woman. The lady wasn't even the there. They living in her house. They just talk about they but taking the of living in there in her house. That's she that's a whole. Lived at the house to them. She lived there with them. Listen, they're um full of shit because right. the raw footage and the, some of some of the earlier tapes that. I first brought to you, Dave, we was watching. You heard what the police said to each other. Are you ready to do this? Let's go have some some fun or whatever they said. Yes, I was and and that's what they went and did. Tortured them people. See, this is, they, this was, they wasn't going there to see if they was taking advantage of someone. This is something they do out there. This was a, this, this was a bunch of frat boys that they gave back yeah. to that happened to be fun 
of uh, mistreating people of color. Now, let's be clear about this. They don't, in this area, they don't want black people to reside there. So their intentions was to terrorize them so that they would move. They don't want black residents. That's why these cops was doing it. They went there with the intention of terrorizing them in hopes that they was going to move away. Um, now, the cover-up, when it went all bad, for them, it, it went all bad only because the person that they shot in the mouth, he lived, right? Now, they shot both of them. No, they didn't know shot one. They shot one. They shot one. He, he got shot in the mouth. Then they went out on the porch for a period of time and started planning their cover-up in plain sight. Now, mm -hmm. these guys was going to, which is known as a drop gun, they was going to take a gun that they had on their body and drop it beside the victim to justify the shooting. Then when they decided better of that, they decided to put the BB gun that they used to assault them with alongside, lay, lay, lay the, beside the, um, the victim that got shot in the mouth. So that, again, was going to justify shooting. Not only did they, 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 they do that, they also decided they were going to make it into a drug case. So where did they get the, um, the meth from? But they put meth on they this got person. Planted. They put meth on this person. They and that didn't work it. either. And that didn't they work. Had it. And that didn't work either. So um again, but you gotta remember one of these. I'd like to know was, where's this lady at? Where's the lady that was in there? She probably saw the whole thing. No, she was out of there. There was, was not a lady up in there. There was when they did that. They didn't, they didn't say they didn't say anything about there was a lady present. They waited until the lady left to do that. That the, the, the only white lady they spoke of is the one that made the complaint. And these individuals went there with the intention, intent, purpose of um threatening and terrorizing these um individuals in hopes that they would vacate the premises. That that's 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 what it was. They wanted them to leave. So that, that was their lady. intention. That white lady who made the complaint should get in trouble too because you've been yeah. living there for some they, they, time. You so know, you knew there was nothing going on. Like it's a lot of it's that. Going. It's a lot of that going on. A lot of that bull. The lady, um, the dude, the reverend. We seen that on the on the thing before. The reverend, he watering the neighbor's yard. The the next door neighbor. You ain't being nosy when you should be nosy, but you being nosy when you don't have to be. No, no, they're being, they're being they're being um attentive and being nosy because it happens to be a person of color. That's what it is. As far as they're concerned, you are out of place. You you out of line. You don't. You shouldn't sure be there. You shouldn't sure be with in this there. Picture. You are that. That's what's wrong with the picture. Um. All right, so you guys again, let's uh, okay, let's go a, a step, take it a step further. So, then to get rid of the evidence, they put these men, had them stripped down and shower and put um, fresh clothing on them. So, they was gonna take <laughs> their, 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 the clothing that had all the evidence on it and burn it. They tried to. This is crazy. But let's remember too, let's go back to the water board. They tried to drown these individuals with um any liquids that they could find. They used what they say, chocolate syrup. I mean, I don't uh, again, I don't know what type of devious these are. <laughs> What's wrong with <laughs> these I told you it was their sexual <laughs> preference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't take my word for it. Um, do the research, look it up. Uh, this is disgusting. It was milk, water, and I believe chocolate syrup. And what were they yeah. planning on? All the, all the I, think stuff they, that, I think they used all what the was in the house. The humiliate them. That's who they humiliate. Oh, if they had eggs, they throw eggs at them. Sounds like they were going to make them boys to a couple like of I said, a bunch of, a bunch of frat boys. That's, that's what it seemed like. A bunch of college aged um, uh, boys that did, did, it got out of control. Now, now, don't forget to see. I don't know if you guys see all the videos. 
But there was also talks that did one of the, one or two of those police officers was upstairs wiping the place, while the other ones was down there on um, being on them. The only reason why they stopped stealing is because they heard the fire shot downstairs. When they heard the gunfire, that's when they stopped doing what they was doing. Who said they put back what they were stealing? But um, again, I wasn't there. This is what I uh, read. They ain't put back shit. So they, they caught all the evidence on them niggas. So so they 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 did what they did, and here's the cover up. So you guys do realize this happened in January, and it wow. just now and it's just now coming to the public's attention. Yeah, that because those talk. Um, I forgot the name of the black people that took over. They stepped in to help this case get moved along. You should remember the name, Dave. Well, um, I can't remember. No, it right don't put now. that on me because you you do your own research. I believe it is uh black on justice lawyers. Something like that. And they they came and helped them along. That's when they put up they wanted, I think, four hundred million dollar lawsuit or something. Yeah, so Timmy, that that disputes with um you guys were saying earlier about the one point five. It's a big number. Yeah. They going they just going to be big numbers. They probably they should get double figures, both of them. Um, Ten million a piece. Not triple. Triple. So so again, let me okay, let me ask the lady something. When you hear this type of stuff happening to a man, period. I don't know, can can as women, can you respect a man that you know that that's happened to him? And I want y'all, I want y'all to be honest. Let's go to Keanu. That's foul. That is some nasty work right there. I, I, I mean, why, why, would, why, would I lose, why would I lose respect for somebody who, who, who had not, it's not who their fault. do it to himself? Yeah, it's not his fault. Right. It's mind. not their fault. So why would I lose respect? I would, I would more so as I'm hearing you guys talk, I feel more and more sorry for these men. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And the disgusting, deviant stuff that happened to them. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just checking y'all's temperature. So, you know, yeah, like I wouldn't lose respect. I'd have compassion for that. Mm. Because look those at were, the fact, those how were many women that have been raped and don't come forward with the assault to the police because as women being raped, with the mean like, okay, what did you do to get raped? Like, did you really get raped? We're questioned on our sexuality, whether or not we we would um we did something uh, to attack to 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 warrant. What was our our motive for getting that attention? So why would I look at a man like I know if I got raped, I wouldn't even be questioning that because what man wants to get raped by another man, let alone Never mind a daggone car. Now, now, mm. now, let, let me stop y'all right there because y'all keep using the word rape. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what the technical. They were sexually assaulted. It was the way it sounded like. They, 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 it, was, it was done against their will. What do you think rape is? Listen, sexual assault. Ain't you can be raped. Another act that you was not participating in is rape. Exactly. I I even use rape as they raped me for my money, charging me a lot for this little well, item you know right here. They raped me on the innocence. Okay, you know what? Money really has no... Technically, when you're raping, you're assaulting someone sexually, mm -hmm. and money has no play in it, so it's a if it's a sexual assault, it's a rape case. Okay. Plain and simple bottom line. All right. Um, All right. It's about it. Now, for me losing respect for him because he got raped, no. But I would be very concerned for his mental health. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. He probably want to kill himself. That is deep, right there. He, 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 I'll yeah. tell you that. The That's why I said, "Is there any time? Those were devils. Mm -hmm. Is there any time you could serve to be 
replenish back into the public after you did No, they're like just going to get out and do the you same thing again. You need to be again. in jail getting raped every day. Oh, so... Well, well, no, yeah. no, there's no there's no time, but there's also, like, it would be a slap in the face for them to get nothing right. or to have That's been charged with need. nothing. Well, they Is are getting boss? next to nothing right now. They need well, to get I mean, castrated and not for an hour. slap in the face. Actually, that's a spit in your mouth. Yes, that's the state charges. That's state the state charges. charges don't, like I said, they don't fit the crime what you of, know? of what they were tried for. In no. Because initially, they said something thing. about life. On top of this, um, these cops that did all this sexual assault and all that good stuff, well, it wasn't good, so to speak. Well, they well, need to well, be on the sex offenders list. There you go. There you go. Assault, assaulted these men sexually, so they need to be labeled as level three mm. sex offenders. And, yes, and everywhere they go, if they move out of state, they need to register in every place. Every time they move, they need to register to every place they move to. They probably won't That's even make them register as sex offenders. They're not. They're not. That's, That's not simple. That's Why wouldn't well, they, they do? They, they, That's crazy. They, Why wouldn't the they? They did a sexual federal. assault. That, that's my point. Yeah, that's what I said, Tommy. Hopefully, federal get them. Well, we'll federal. come in and take care of that. Yeah. And, and they need to do. Um, the DOJ needs to do an investigation, and the and the police department. Okay. You know, well, I was going to tell you, um, Dave, the day arrested the boss. Look at the boss is down yeah, with that. The chief. Yeah, the chief. That's, that's he 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 about. he's all involved in it. So so let's 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 get get back to that. All right. So I asked you guys that because I wanted to know what the women how the women felt about that because these men could easily feel like they've been robbed of their manhood and now they're no good for any woman. That could be their mentors right now. Most of yeah. them, so they physically they're messed up. Um, so sorry. You know you that that and 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 before we go on to the next question, this is what I would say to all those wives of those officers. Um, if if they are married, I would be questioning what type of man you're married to. The fact that they're so so. Let me be clear about this. Let me be clear about this. I don't know if these officers was walking around with dildos on them, or if they found a dildo on the um in, in the Property. house and they used it. Sounds on. like they made a pit stop. This is like I said, the level of sexual deviancy and it, 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 it's, it's bad, bad, bad. But um, let's talk about the chief. Um, I, I think his name is Brian or something like that. Um, he don't probably, take, don't man take my word for it. He said, this, and, and I quote, they lied to him. Mm -hmm. One of them lied. But there are reports that before this incident, mm -hmm. the chief participated in the training of these individuals. All right? Oh, now, the, 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 the chief is also guilty of some crimes, alleged crimes as well. Now, these people felt like they, they had um, a level of, of impunity where they was above any consequence. Oh, wow. That's that's why they did what they did. Now, um, you got the number one guy, the, the chief. Mm -hmm. So remember these names, Hunter. Hunter is the person that that, that, that shot Mr. Jenkins in the face, right? In the mouth, <laughs> right? He and, got out of control. And, and 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 Hunter is also the one that is known for discharging his weapon. Um, at a drop of a dime because he's guilty of it in um other cases. So Hunter is the deputy. That's who that was. That yeah, shot. he's one of the deputies, but he he's the one that shot um uh Mr. Jenkins in the mouth. That's that's the shooter right there. So they you they already know everybody would come in. Watch out for Hunter because he's a shooter. He 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 came in the house and basically shot his gun somewhere. off. And, and and it all moved forward um um from there. Okay. Keep on being PC anyway. Now 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 let's 
Now, now, let me ask you this next question before we move on to the video. Now, did you guys hear during the video where they said there was two other members of the Goon Squad that was not present during this event? Did you hear that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That, did you that's hear what that, they, right? they said that the federal um the federal bureau is saying that, that saying that. So so let me let me say this to you guys. Well, so if just these, because they wasn't there. No, no, no. That that's not that's not my point. My my thing is my question is so this is my statement. And it's a question as well, but do you think that Mr. Jenkins and Mr. Parker's Parker is going to be able to reside? in this town um, or after this is all taken place because even if these deviants go to jail, these devils as Tanya called them, if they, they go to jail, they're still too disarmed loose. Not it's to not do jail. you think they shouldn't want to at all. Um, they should right. up and that, move. I guess that's your answer. Um, Bird, now, why, why aren't they being in Bird, He's out. For, um. All right, Sean, let's get you back into the conversation because you've been quiet. Do you think these individuals, it would be safe for them to continue to reside within this town or the surrounding cities knowing the nature of the beast? Of course it will be. Because just like the report said that there was two individuals that were not reported, there's way more than just them Thank that you. are mm -hmm. part of this goon squad. Mm -hmm. This is a, it, 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 it's, they're, they're like a community. And like we said, it's it's Mississippi. They're mm -hmm. known for things like this. So, you know, some people may not want to associate with them, but as far as outcasting them and, and castrating them, you know, socially, that's not going to happen. Mm. Um, Gregory, do you think it's safe for these um gentlemen to remain um, in No, I area? don't. I don't think they should be in society. No, I'm not, I'm, talking, I'm, I'm not talking, talking about, about the victims. I'm talking about the victims. I'm talking about Mr. Jennings and Mr. Parker. Mr. So Jen think Jen Jenkins. Jenkins. And Mr. I'm Parker. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Correct me. Michael and Eddie. All right. Do I think it's safe for them to be where they was when it happened? No, no, no. Do you, do you think it's safe for the victims to remain in that area to continue to reside within that town? But furthermore, a surrounding um city or town. Um, no, I don't. Area. I think they should move out of that lady's house and move to the side <laughs> where the black people are. Hmm. Maybe they should move out of Mississippi yeah. altogether. That, that would be I just told you because, that's because that's if you're rewarded, it is separated. If, it's if you're rewarded any type side. of millions, if they're living you can the give yourself house, a different life. The wrong side of town. Nobody's running me out of my city. No. Well, running well, me out of my that, damn that city. Not, then you might be victimized again. Again and again. Oh, uh, well. Again. My millions are going to keep me from that. No, I your millions going to run out quick. About that. I don't know about that because I think that... If Money you... doesn't help you in that situation. But, nope. and, and it doesn't matter what side of the city you live on because... Look, where was the five black cops from? Was they from Mississippi too? No, that was Memphis. Oh, okay. No, we're gonna get don't worry, we're gonna get back to that. Um, so again, I, I agree with um it doesn't matter what part of Mississippi you live in. I feel like that um in that situation. Maria, well, I wanted you to chime in on that, you and Kiana, because y'all the same thing. Do you think these gentlemen should continue to reside within this area, within the state? No, uh, whoever said it, like they said, I'll just move out of that whole state altogether. That's right. Right? Because it just ain't safe for you or your family no more. Nope. There you go. No nope. clue. You're you you going to go. have the people that is, you know, every time you're walking by, they staring, they pointing, or they whispering. So yeah. that can play a lot on your mental as well. So yeah. it's not, you just need to move. Uh, these, these, um, Kiana. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't think it, it would be safe for them because you only got you only got the tip of the iceberg with the uh, garbage that's in the mm. uh, police force and um, and any of family members that want to retaliate because their family members mm -hmm. are now in jail because your black ass opens your mouth. You're, yeah. you're you have a target on your back. 
So mm-hmm. no, I don't think it's safe for them. And when the officers come back into the community, they will within, be welcomed with open arms to their side. Yeah. And, 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 and um, who's to say these individuals, even though did they get fired, who's to say that they're not going to be offered jobs in the surrounding uh, town or city? Exactly. Or the captain, whoever it was, is waiting for them so they can react it again. All right, yeah. guys. That is Mr. Jenkins and um Mr. Parker's story. And stay tuned because I feel like the saga continues. They are not done, whereas that is concerned. Um let's talk about um there's another individual that was victimized by said goon squad. I don't know if every member of of this unit was present during this heinous crime. But uh, you guys, back in 2021, I believe it was, another black man was murdered at the hands of some overzealous, uh, racist cops. Um, and this gentleman's name was, uh, Damian Cameron. So, apparently there was some, uh, car theft in the area. These people uh, chased uh, young Damien into the house, uh, uh, dragged him back outside, and then they uh, did what they did at that point. The, the grandmother, I think it was the grandmother and grandfather's house, um, something weird. This oh, wow. place. But you guys are going to see the video, and you'll get a better understanding. Um, Mom, when she was interviewed, she said that... Um, had these individuals been brought up on charges when they did what they did to her son, they wouldn't have been free walking the streets to do what they did to Mr. Jenkins and um, Mr. Parker. Also, she said she thought she was going outside to tell her son that I will, I will see you in the morning to post bail. When she got outside to go see her son, he was laying on the ground dead. Um, Gregory, you want to share that video? Yes, sir. And everybody, please withhold your comments until the video is at its conclusion. Start Mississippi Goon Squad cover up button unavailable. Zoom meeting. Damien Cameron says the cause of his death is being covered up. Cameron died in July of 2021 after family members say two deputies entered their home illegally and beat him. Rosalind Anderson has reaction today where national civil rights advocates and families demand access to those investigation records. Ross. Community X and Cameron's mother and brother want justice and answers today sharing what was reportedly his autopsy report showing trauma but giving no cause of death. I'm just here reaching out, you know, I need justice for my son. Nearly two years ago, Monica Lee's son, Damian Cameron, died while in the custody of Rankin County deputies. Family members say two deputies entered their home on Hood Drive, struggled with him in a bedroom, and one later held his knee on the back of Cameron's neck before driving away with him. I want justice. I want the two officers held accountable, Ryan Bailey held accountable, because in my heart, he might not mean anything to them, but that was my child, and I think I deserve justice for him. National activist organization Community X is joining the family's fight. They want the release of dash cam video and public records of the investigation from Rankin County and MBI. Why is it that only the police officers and the deputies and the sheriff and everyone within Rankin County PD were interviewed but not the family. And then you conclude to say that there's insufficient evidence. We haven't seen them since the next morning after they left and they made a mess in the yard trying to flee, I guess you can call it. They came back and threw dirt in our yard to cover up the mud tracks that they left and that was it. An autopsy provided by the family indicated swelling to Cameron's face, traumatic wounds to his hands with the bottom of his feet cut from toe to heel. No cause of death was included.
did not indict the two Rankin County deputies. The family is calling on the Department of Justice to investigate. Rosalyn Anderson, three on your side. Hmm. All right, so is that the end of that video? Yeah. All right. That's a word. Let's talk about it. Um, young Damien. Um, you know, again, what was the guy's name? The 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 um Brian, what? What was the the, the chief's name? Did anybody get that name? It was kind of muted, but I thought she said like lying or something. All right, so I'm I'm telling y'all, somebody commit that name to a memory. You're gonna hear it again. This is this is the common denominator in all of this. It's it's Brian. This dude's in the same in the same fucking video now, now, twice. So let let's let's talk about it. You heard what they said? They came into the house, dragged them out. And then they did what they did. Now, this 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 person's death, as I said, was similar to George Floyd because he died due to the fact that they placed the knee on his I'm neck. Looking. So it, I, I'm 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 starting to wonder: Is this best practice for those southern states? Is this what they do? Um. Are you okay? Obviously, they do. Obviously. You know, I think they're getting trained to do stuff like that. I'm, I'm starting to think so, Patsy, because um, George Floyd's death was in um the self as well, right? Yes, it was in Minnesota. Was that Minnesota? Oh, was it Minnesota? Well, Midwest South. Um, is is pretty much they they getting. Those states are getting trained to do these kind of things. They put their knee on a black man's neck or somebody of color, a minority um, person. You know, that's what they do to people that are not white. Mm -hmm. Put their knee on a, a minority person. That's uh, not cool. Maria, let's get you to um jump in there. How you felt about that video? The same way I felt about the other one. It's disgusting. It's it's a shame that you're not safe no more. Where you can go in your house like you. We still don't even know if this man even did the crime. We just know he's dead. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the fact that I was able to go in his home and pull him out. And did what you did? It's the they stuff. had they had no respect for for the homeowner. No. They just it sounded like they just went in there and dragged him out, didn't give them no explanation, no nothing. This no, woman don't even when, know why they, they was in the room with her when son beating on her. Um, stuff like that. They start threatening the other people that's in the home with their guns, telling you to stand back or they're going to shoot everybody. Crazy. Hey, they, you ain't going to get away with it. Well, they have. For two years. Terrorism. Terrorism. They, they've already done it. it is this is what like I said. I they, they, need to, they need to do a federal investigation into the whole state of Mississippi Police Department. But remember, every guys, county, every county, every city, every everything. Didn't they say they cleaned this up back then when the situation with um the other black people that was murdered down there? Didn't they say they cleaned it up then? Didn't they say? No, they what, I thought that was a different county. That was in Memphis. I thought. Yeah, most most Mississippi, of those Mississippi. Most of those states like that, they just put a band aid on it. Exactly, and so it happened again. This is not the first time something heinous has happened in Mississippi. You gotta check your memory banks. Well, we know that the the brawl that happened. In Mississippi burning. Um, um, if I'm not 
mistaken, right? The, the Mississippi River has a lot to do with ley lines and people dying yeah. there, and it's always you some black person the, being killed. You just watched that something that happened in Mississippi. The bottom line is that because they are police officers, they always gonna think that they're right to do what they do. And I'm sorry. Exactly. Me as a mother, I guess I'm gonna be that mother that get killed with a child or whatever, because you're not just snatching my son out of my house and there's no explanation. You're not just gonna you're not just gonna bogard your way in my house. Right. Like call your sergeant, call somebody else. But because this is not going to just happen like that. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. In the year 2023, we got basically an um, abduction. We're taking them out of their home. And and, and, and next time you see them, they're, they're dead. And there's no answers. We don't know what That's happened. like the play now, chaser. Now, what I, was Emmett telling you guys, what I was telling you guys is the <clears throat> memory banks, Emmett Till, 1955. <laughs> Mississippi. This is why I'm telling you. This is something that they're indic This is indicative of of that that state. They do not value a black person's life. And now you got people that have been raised in those conditions, preconditions to think lesser of a certain race, and now you give them a badge, an authority. You are just on um, giving them uh, the the right, basically, to do what the hell they want to do. Because they already, they, without a badge, they feel that they're justified in doing what they do. <laughs> so now that's like, they that's, like the the slave, that's like the slave chases that was telling the, 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 the slave owners how to discipline the slaves. You need to chop his foot off. Mm. That'll keep him from running, sir. Uh, yeah, keep him from running. Um, ladies, the same thing like when they thought that they wanted they white women, they cut their penis off. Like, that's what they should do to those police officers for raping these black guys. Like and those guys are lucky because they was going to end up like Emmett Till or the other little boy that they put his, the knee on and his that, neck. That's exactly what they was they was going to do. Uh, if, 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 all right, Kiana, how do you feel about this situation with Damien Cameron? Like Maria said, like the, um, like the other story that we used so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm disgusted that, you know, in in this day and age, you you, you can actually just rewind the clock back to eighteen something, nineteen hundred and something. I mean, these things have been going on forever with our, um, with our people, um, and you know they've never had to be checked because. Again, they're running everything from the front to the back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and these little, to me, slaps on the wrist aren't a deterrent for others to not continue to do what they've been doing. So it's just disgusting. And um, I feel, you know, really sad for his mother. I mean, again, I know that these, you know, when it comes to court cases, they don't happen overnight. You know, they do have, a, you know, logs of how long, you know, there's backdates on these cases. So I actually feel that some of them are getting pushed up quicker because they could be, we could be talking about this case five years from now of it just being a verdict. So um, I, I don't know. I just feel really um, sad and hurt for his mother and any mother who's had to deal with this shit and I I actually agree with Maria you're not touching my baby without me <laughs> so I guess we all going down um so you guys would be happy to know that um there's talks of reopening um Damien's case because the piece the, the lawyer that represented um Damien is also the lawyer that is um, representing Mr. Jenkins and um, Parker. So he is calling for a full investigation of the police department in Mississippi, period, of their whole um, structure. And he's calling for the record um, resignation. Um, and, 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 and what he says, sentencing, 
of blind because again he's the person who's been uh present or or the acting uh, uh chief officer during all these um incidents now i guess you guys could do the research and get a more in depth um uh account of what what took place um during that case but see as you heard in the video they're still uncertain because the, the court records aren't being released. Um, they don't even know, they didn't even, they can't explain why this man died. Um, uh, all they know that his uh, blood vessels was in the eyes um, exposed, sounds like strangulation to me, yet again. But again, they're trying to say they don't know what the reason was, the real reason why he died. However, well, that's just the corner. That was the that, that's the the city or state's uh, autopsy. That's not their independent autopsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, however, the grandmother and grandfather said there was a different account. Said when they when they came outside, they said there was one of the police officers crying and saying, "Oh my God, why did this happen to me? Why did this had to happen to me?" Now, I don't know if that's the one that was nailing on his neck. Um, but um. That's what they said. One of them was doing. Um, Sean, how you feel about this situation, Damien? Again, another Mississippi at its finest. You know, um, it's sad that it it went down the way that that it did, and that we don't know all the details of it. We can see and speculate what took place, but to actually have the true accounts of it. Um, we don't have that. Um, I was listening to what, I know you asked me a question. I was listening to what everyone said about, you know, the the, the different mothers on here who said that, you know, that um, that no cop would have came up in their house and it's not, you know, and taking their child without them interacting. And I always say that we that live here up north in the East Coast, we don't realize how, lucky that we have it compared to those that live in the south exactly because up here we don't experience don't. stuff like that so right. if anyone comes into our home whether a cop or just a family member acting crazy we're going to be able to stand up to that and and to hell with whatever repercussions come down south that's a mentality i, I think kiana you have um a phrase that you that you use um, and I'm forgive me for saying it wrong, but it's embedded in them to where you know they they have to accept certain things down there to a degree because that's just the way of life Trauma. in those places. You know, I, you know, I agree. I agree with you. They they do have a different mentality, and it's um you know it is and it's instilled from you know like let's that's let's forget good. about it. Don't. Yeah, so that's, that's what Sean is saying because in the Midwest, like we, we um in the Midwest in Ohio, when I went back to live there, it's like they were still they was the black folks there were scared to speak up for themselves, and the employers that I had that when I was speaking up for myself about pay and stuff like that, they didn't know how to handle that. They was flustered. Yeah, you. Talking, you 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 was you was labeled a troublemaker. You better get back up north because yeah. you, you you was causing problems. And and also too, I was just thinking I had an incident here in Cambridge where I was talking to a police officer and I you know I was getting in his face and he kept saying, Ma'am, don't get in my face, ma'am, don't touch me, ma'am, don't keep get your don't keep putting your finger in my face. And I was just thinking what Sean said that if I had, was doing that down south, I probably would have been dead. All right. Been on the floor. Or, 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 or you seen the color purple. You see what they did to um Oprah, right? Yeah. Um, that's more than likely what would have happened to you. And 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 I think the phrase that you was referring to, Sean, um, Sean, you correct me if wrong. You said that um preconditions because the trauma's in our DNA or something like that. Yes, that's what I was. Yep. Oh yeah, it is passing on today. Yeah. And also, I, I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, we're all 
most of us on this panel are raised in a thing where we don't we don't want problems with the police. We wouldn't be the one to. Uh, well, I'm surprised you did that, Tanya, because I don't think so. I feel like uh, uh, what Maria is saying is our children will supersede those instincts that we normally would have of not being an agitator of police. But when you touch my kid, I don't give a shit about none of that. We have a problem. So I think that's right. a certain other thing. But I mean, again, that's a northern person, right. not and, and one who raised from in Mississippi. From and I don't I, want no parts of Mississippi. I don't right. even want to visit Mississippi. I don't even I, want to right. I, I don't even Mississippi. want to visit it the yeah, you, you and me either. both. I don't, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want a flat tire in Mississippi. South. I don't want a layover on a plane. None I don't want to move to a down south um state either. Or at at all. But at I all. have experienced that firsthand with the police, you know, thinking they was going to just come in the yard and take my son and say he fits the description. Fit the description for what? Young black like, man. Sergeant, oh, Abba, because that's you're not just gonna do that here. And most time, people don't know their rights, right? So they are scared. Yeah. That's what they they, yeah. they try to intimidate you. That's the whole intention. It's just the name. I'm sorry. If I could share a story, I, I, it just something that um, Tony was just saying. It brought me back to um, I was about, I think eight and nine years old and I was in North Carolina and um, my cousin had committed a crime the night before and the state troopers had came to my grandmother's house to get him and they came we, we watched them come up the hill probably they drove their car up the hill pulled up into the yard and proceeded to come up on the porch and now I'm in the the um the living room my grandma was in the kitchen she was washing dishes and, and and when they the way that the cops came up to the door they put their hand on the door and opened it and my grandma said hold on hold on he's coming hold on they didn't say you know ma'am or anything like like they already had the like like they had the right to just open her door her screen door and walk in yeah, when, my grandmother when spoke up. She didn't tell him to get out or anything like that, but she let it be known. Like, listen, they're, they're not going to be any trouble. He's here. He's coming out. And my cousin came on out, but but it just brought me back to how that that right or that or the way of life of how it was that they just walked up, didn't knock on the door. I mean, can clearly see my grandmother standing there. Didn't say, "Ma'am, you know what we're here for." Anything? Just opened up the door and walked in. Hmm. Uh, again, I think that's the right to do that. Too. That's that. That's that. That's privilege. That's that privilege that they afforded because of the color of their skin in the area. I don't give a goddamn that if you. I don't give a goddamn if you do have property rights. We say you don't. Goddamn it. Now, now y'all got to remember. We gonna open up the door and that's it. Y'all got to remember too. In each one of these situations, there was no warrants. They no. without warrants. And, and that's why I said that we don't even know if this boy really did the crime. What right. was the crime? They said something happened in the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, it just come in someone's house. That's kidnapping. That's abduction. That's exactly what it is. But, but I guess they don't see it that way when it's a police officer doing it. Because also, I don't know, you, you guys, did we hear, did y'all hear that um, for their charges? They said that it was um, kidnapping. Because no. that's, I didn't hear any that in the charges, but you can go back in, um, do some more research to see if that was a part of their charges. So again, let's get to the next video. Um, you know, to the parents of, of, of Damian Cameron. I hope that um, I think his name is Shabazz. Um, uh, the lawyer's name is the legal representative is uh, uh Shabazz. I want to say Malik Shabazz. But if you get a chance to look him up or on um, his view on this on on Damien's case and the uh, um recent case with uh, Mr. Jenkins and uh, Parker, you're gonna see um 
he 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 is he out to make a lot of money in that situation, and he is not giving up until he get the um preferred um outcome. He's not stopping. So all I can tell you is those people in Rankin County, Mississippi, y'all and y'all ain't ready. Y'all are not ready. They I got a quick question. That's John Cocker's cousin. Have so y'all noticed the pattern ever since the Eric Gardner guy? Of the I can't breathe and these police choking these people or making them asphyxiate somehow, putting a knee on the neck. It don't well, remind you of like American History X when the dude stepped on the guy's neck. Well, y'all gotta oh, remember he, he sobbed on his face. Y'all, y'all gotta remember that was the mindset. Keep your keep your um foot on their neck so they won't there won't be an uprising. That was the way of thinking um uh, back then. That's that 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 was don't the mindset. Say was is. Well, it, well, Still, it, mentality doesn't change. Well, well, only you know, the calendar now, changes. So, so they did a good right. job of masking it. You know, at one point, but now, it like was, I said, it the blind was never is masked. Off. The blind it is was off. never masked. Um, because it can come out any any given time. So all all that was was cliche because that's the wrong day, and you gonna see the real this of it. And I agree with Timmy the, that the mask has, it, it's for a population, it's never been a mask for us. We've mm. always known. It's been a, a, a mask that's been uh, put up and shown to other people, what we've been talking about for years. You know, to the, make it look like, to make it look like that's, um, that's not really what's going on. You know, you know you know when you're younger and they tell you when dealing with a wild animal, don't look it directly in the eyes. It's like one of those situations with with, with these police officers um, as of late. It's like the bloodlust is real. Like like once these people get started, they they just you they're beyond reasoning. Um, Gregory, I think we got another video um pertaining to uh the mistreatment of the uh ranking um Mississippi police officers. We got a third video on them. The one about Pierre Woods. Now we're fucking around with Pierre again. Um, Mr. Lacey, are you with us? All right, I don't know where he went. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Sorry about that. All right, so we want to um see the video um about Pierre Woods. And guys, pay attention to these names so we can get this officer's name right because he's about to come up again. That Brian dude, you've been in about five or six participations. I got to mute your phones and hold your responses to the end of the video. Family members say it was excessive. Well, I got to shoot multiple times. This is just wrong. Thank you, Jay. Well, people in the Pahila Hatchie are now leaning on each other after a deadly police standoff took the life of their friend and their neighbor. Police say Pierre Woods initiated the hour-long standoff Monday by firing shots at officers. They then returned fire, killing him. But as WJTV-12's Margaret Ann Carter reports, family members say it was excessive. Well, like, y'all shoot my dad multiple times. This is just wrong. The picture law enforcement has painted is not what Pierre Woods' family remembers. Everyone out here saw my nephew get shot down worse than a dog. Over 20, 30 bullets just back to back. Oh, damn, you hear that? Hmm. Oh, wait, is that the end of the video? Uh, Gregory, is that the end of the video? I guess it is. That's why I saw it. I, I got no, it. it wasn't. I think you um stopped the screen sharing. I don't know how you did it. No, I, I didn't do anything. But um, if you want to run it back, let's run it back. 
I got the whole thing on the damn thing when you sent it. Start Mississippi Goon Squad cover up button unavailable. Zoom meeting. <laughs> The life of their friend and their neighbor. Claire Woods initiated the hour-long standoff Monday by firing shots at officers. They then returned fire, killing him. But as WJTV 12's Margaret Ann Carter reports, family members say it was excessive. We're like, y'all shoot my dad multiple times. This is just wrong. The picture law enforcement has painted is not what Pierre Woods' family remembers. Back when I hear saw my nephew get shot down worse than a dog. Over 20, 30 bullets just back to back. Woods' aunt, Leslie Wynn, says she drove up about an hour before those rounds were fired. That's what I saw what was happening. I was coming to get him to come help me out of my house, and that's what I saw the police is out here, and I said, well, please don't tell me it's my nephew. It was her nephew. Police say Woods was inside the home with a firearm. Having just buried her daughter last month, Wynn begged officers to let her talk to Woods. And I asked him, I said, I just buried my daughter three weeks ago, and I asked him, can I talk to my nephew? They wouldn't let me talk to my nephew. Woods loved when describe him as a kind person willing to go above and beyond for those he loved. But he struggled with mental illness, and Monday was the anniversary of his mother's death. And we was asking, could we all just come right here together and stand and talk to him through this bullhorn, all of us, to let Pierre know, Pierre, we love you, we're going to help you. When I found that he was dead, I didn't know what to do. I just cried the tears because I believe I shouldn't did my dad like that. Sheriff Brian Bailey says it's never the goal to kill anyone, but he couldn't risk the safety of his officers. Reporting in Pelahatchee, Margaret Ann Carter, WJTV 12. Right. Well, the Mississippi Bureau of Investigations has since taken over this investigation. The names of the officers involved are not being released. Zoom meeting. You see that? Yep. You see that? Brian Bailey. Brian Bailey. You see that? He's always, he just the third. And, then, and then they didn't want to release the officer's exactly. name. Exactly. Again, now this, is, this, is, this is the same character. individual in, in each of those situations. Now, y'all remember that name, Brian Bailey. This is the same man that said that his officers lied to him. He was unaware of what took place back in January with Mr. Jenkins and um and Parker. I don't believe it. He was also threatened. well. Then he's an incompetent person. Exactly. So he, he's incompetent of his job, so he shouldn't be in his job. He's a damn liar. That's what he's he is. Liar. Well, That's I mean, liar. Why does he, yes. you know he's lying. But if but if we're gonna stand on what your word is, you're an incompetent. Um, Supervisor, of, and mm -hmm. you should not be working in that position. And, right. and, 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 and based upon, and, and I'm sorry, guys, because you know, you got to protect your mental health and stuff like that. I didn't know that was in that video, to be honest with you. So let me go ahead and apologize to anybody that will view this video um, later on. I didn't know that it was gunfire and all that. Yeah, thank you. So See, that was traumatizing even for me to hear that because I didn't even know that that was what it was until I was listening to it. That is horrible. So just imagine and you hear, the people that you hear witnessed and, that. You hear and the aunt, screaming. you hear and the aunt screaming and carrying on the kid or the, the, the yeah, girl. That, 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 uh, I'm, I'm, He's gonna be traumatized. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because I dare say just hearing that that's going to stay with me. Just hearing that, that, that is traumatizing. That, that individual, now you take into account everything that his family had to say what, what happened prior to that. They said he had mental illness and that is justified, but that's to be expected. His mother died, that was the day um, he, he was approaching anniversary. the anniversary. Uh, another one of his relatives just got buried and stuff like this. Yeah, that person was struggling. But here's the thing I understand. He was in the house with the gun. 
He but the other thing, the other thing too, Dave, is that the people tried to de-escalate. They asked them to let them speak to the man on the bullhorn. There was there was no way to de-escalate that wasn't, situation wasn't because no because yeah. Officer Brian Bailey and his goon squad was already elevated. That's what they intended to do. That's they had it fixed to go out to there and shoot them. And shit. That's um. Go ahead, Sean. <clears throat> Yeah, um, and just to speak on it from a different angle, um, it's very rare that in a situation like this that you allow the public to do your job because then having the family speak to him on the bullhorn, they don't know who this individual is. They don't know how much firearm he has in there. Mm -hmm. They don't know what his king's like. Who's to know that he may have had an issue with whatever family member and took a target practice shot at that person? That that like I hear when we say you know that they didn't allow the family to the it's not police policy mm -hmm. to get the public involved in a standoff situation like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. All right, I'll give so, you that. Yeah, but wait a minute, hold on. But if they want you to, to get involved. When they post be looking for a suspect, they all we we need the public's help. So yeah, you we need the public's help in that help. in that accent, but we don't put them in harm's way though. Yeah, that is his own people. He ain't gonna put his people yeah, well, in harm's well, way. Let's, let's yeah, come on, they have, have had like a full. I mean, well, he all the did time. have a mental issue. Yeah, let's be clear. Can, can I ask this question? Um, how old was this gentleman? This young man. He was in his thirties or something. No, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't get to him. All right. Um. Even even so. Um. In our time of age, this is 2023. Or what year was that? Was that in the current? That was this year. Uh, no, it wasn't. You guys. So. So if, even if it was in the twenties, the 2020 or 2019, everyone has a cell phone. You can't you can't go to the police officer and say, let's use your horn. We're gonna to talk to our loved one, convince him to stand down, rethink what he's doing. Why you guys didn't try calling the cell phone? Do you have a cell phone? Because that was another way of getting in touch with him. Call him. If you don't answer, text him. He can read. I'm I'm pretty sure he can read. If he can't, then you're fucked. But you send him a text message. You send him a call. You send him, you can even send him a um voicemail or video um where he can hear you saying we love you please we know you you're missing your moms you're missing your cousin um we're here for you you know just there's a lot of ways they could have dealt with that when they told them no but for those police officers to unload all of those they definitely unload. Like, what the but hell? Robert do we yeah, not know please. if the family did that or not I don't know. That's what I said. I don't know. I said, I don't know if they attempted to do that. Um, that's what I'm asking. Did he have a phone? Did they try to do these things? Um, that was another way to get in touch with him. If, if they told you no, you could have said, well, let me run over here and call him real quick or send him a video. Or if y'all did it before y'all um, asked him. I don't know those things. But that's that's what I'm bringing up. Because there's probably other people that listen to this show later is going to say, did they even attempt to call him on the phone? Did they text, text him? Did they send them a daggone video, something expressing their love? It's, but, it's, it's right. The horrible and, and thing so, was those thirty. Well, I guess, before. I guess the, I guess the reason why I, I posed the question because I want to know where, where are you going with that? Like, what, what's your point of? Because I'm, 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 I'm thinking like if I was a family member, I got there. Oh my god, what's happening? All these cops out there. They're about to shoot him. Let me call the phone real quick and see if he answer. Let me send him a text message to see if he reads and I can send him a prayer or something to distract what he's doing. And maybe he would just walk out with his hands up, no weapons oh. on him, and he would still oh. be alive. Okay, so now, 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 and now I, you explained that. Now, my, I pose this. Let's say all of that happened and he did not respond to any of that. Now what? Like I'm still trying to see what your point is. Well, so my, next point is, my, my next point is my next point is this: place. it doesn't justify the many of rounds those police officers shot in that boy. 
and that okay. grown man or whatever it's, he was. It's definitely tough. Um, it's, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, Sean, I know I, you're going to say that's their job and they're no, just doing their job. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. What I'm going yeah, to say is... I'm not going to say that that's their job or anything like that. What I'm going to say is we don't know what what the other circumstances were. Again, when I when I made my statement about they have a man who who's holding them off at bay mm -hmm. with gunfire, they don't know what how much ammunition or how much gunplay he got going on behind there. Let let let's get a visual account of this. So when when the shooting started, where was the uh the victim? Inside the house. Somewhere inside the house. Where was the police officers? Outside, outside the, house. the house. So this is what I was going to say. If that was going on, as an officer in a standoff situation, shouldn't you be filled in with full details of what's going on before y'all decide what about Not the flying how, is that how? How, how? How are you? Because they like, how much it, you it got some details. What, what information? I, I'm going to stand up as well, oh, I don't agree with the overkill, but again, you don't know. This is in not real time. Brian they don't got time right. to be this is, they don't have to, taking right. notes. Like, like, okay, let's take right. notes, doing all this a, stuff. One it's person real time. in the house. We got to make a decision. No, no, no. This, this is why they say. If, if he's shooting, at, if he's shooting right. outside of the home, he becomes a threat to everyone in that everyone area. Everyone in that I, I area, that. exactly. I, I get that, but that's why they're, that's so we why know he now really that, was the one that shot first. Well, listen, listen, that, that's why now, this, that's why now they want um, mental health uh, um, professionals on hand in situations that, That's, that's like the next that. question, the, the next the statement I'm going to make. And, 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 and David, David, normally talk yes, to these guys? David, and I yeah, negotiate. And that's all fine and dandy. But still, you can have all the mental health people on, but, but if a shot is fired, yeah, all that stuff goes out the window, sir. Yeah, I, I get that. But but what I'm saying is, I just want I, I wanted to show you guys this is a pattern with this squad, with this unit, and Brian Bailey is the it's person. The leader. He's always so can I say this? I think that insane. last statement is BS because that kid got Burger King. After he shot all them kids, but, but and nobody wait. went in there and shot him with deadly force. Now you got a mentally ill person that shot because in the he house. Didn't, he was he in the didn't house stand by himself. Y'all go in there and kill him, and that makes he didn't sense. have that a standoff no with sense. the cops. Where's his burden? He didn't, have a, he didn't have a standoff with the cops, sir. They went in after. He had him a standoff with real people. Oh, this this is the problem. We, there wasn't, we no, there wasn't no there wasn't no standoff. He Listen. assassinated. He murdered. And that was people. it. And he sat there and waited for him. And 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 again, now I will say this: if 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 they should have shot that us, kid dead. But see, if is a if if no threat to is them. bad is bad in either situation. And that situation, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was excessive. But again, all I'm telling you guys is this if is you're in, if your life is threatened. You shoot first, well, ask questions that, later. Well, that may be so, but that seems the pattern is that police department, that county, that state, they shoot first, ask questions later. They're not held accountable for any acts committed, criminal acts committed um towards people of color. It just it seems like their intentions, their approach is hostile when dealing with people of color down here. That's that's just what those videos show. Now there might be more to that video than we're unaware of, but yeah, was they doing their job? Yes. Was it um excessive force? Well, y'all well, heard the gunfire. Listen, uh, listen what's ex what's excessive to us might not be excessive to law enforcement or the situation at hand. Mm. Let it let it have been one of their family members or you guys' family members, and and, and knowing the circumstances at hand, um, knowing that this mm -hmm. kid lost his mother, lost a cousin. It was an anniversary day. Um, he got mental health, and the cops shot off thirty rounds or more. And your family member or your son, everyone on here, shot maybe once or twice or once out that house. 
you would think they could have handled it a different way. Of course we would have thought that. Man, nobody disputing that. Listen uh-huh. to what my state my statement was what's excessive to us is not excessive to them. And I and, and I agree with you. And but I'm gonna say this also, right? You know, and this is what we got this person had mental health issue, right? Um that's what they we, say. We, we we don't know. We don't know mm-hmm. because there are some individuals where you know we don't know if that was his way out. And it was wrong what they did. But again, so you're saying he was on a suicide mission. What, you yeah. don't know. When you don't know, you speculate. I can I can go with you, that. You don't you he, don't know, you speculate. He, he's done lost his mother. Uh, uh is coming up on the anniversary. Then he just lost a cousin. So yeah, I can see that. But but I will say this. I'm gonna stand on what I said about it. Um this is indicative of, of, of that um of that town, that 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 state. Where the police force, there is, I think that there's a a, a racial factor involved in in these situations. What are they going to do with Mr. Bryan? This is how we control the community. He should be going to jail. You got it. Yes. If he's always there in the picture when something's going on with his fellow officers, why ain't he being brought on charge? He's the lead, he's the ringleader. Because they, they should get a Rico case. He's the one that's indicted. They're calling mm-hmm. for his dismissal, but, yeah, go, Greg, yeah, but don't Rico just case. dismiss him. Give him time. They, how? They they haven't found anything to um stick to him. He he's been guilty of of criminal activity or uh, um excessive force. He um but but they haven't found anything to stick um to, to remove him from he, his position. He intimidates the you guys know, you guys gotta said. remember this is Mississippi. They're going to protect those that think like those. They're going to, they're going to protect the good old boy. It's so so old so boy. so you guys you gotta take that to um put that add that into the equation. All right, let's get an update on what happened to um Tyree Nichols just to refresh you guys' memory. That was the uh, the young man that was murdered by five Memphis cops during a um so called routine mm-hmm. traffic stop. Gregory, you got that video ready? One second. Ain't no more bullets gonna be flying, is it? Oh yeah. This is this uh, an update. This, 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 this one here. Down. This is an update. This one here is a truck vehicle. So this way, Mr. Teens, Kayla they Solomon is joining us live tonight outside of 201 Poplar. Evil. Kayla, the DA's <laughs> office didn't specify which cases were dismissed, but we do know they. More than 30 cases dropped, all involving the five former Memphis police officers charged in the death of Tyree Nichols. It's the announcement made today by District Attorney Steve Mulroy after he says his office reviewed some 100 cases in total. Fox Routine's Kayla Solomon is joining us live tonight outside of 201 Poplar. Kayla, the DA's office didn't specify which cases were dismissed, but we do know they involve the former Scorpion Unit officers. Yeah, Darcy, we were able to do some digging and what we found was that there are some of these cases that have been ongoing after January, after this case broke in January. I spoke to an attorney who says he did take on and represented some of these cases over the last few months. And since then, he's expecting to hear more. More than 30 cases dismissed and several other cases where charges are downgraded. It all stems from cases that include these five former Memphis police officers, Emmett Martin, Tadarius Bean, Desmond Mills, Justin Smith, and Demetrius Haley. They're the five men who are charged with killing Tyree Nichols after a traffic stop on January 7th. As soon as this case broke uh, with Tyree Nichols and the officers' names were released, that pretty much triggered a review of every case that came into my office. Attorney Brandon Hall says since January, he's represented a handful of defendants who also had encounters with the now disbanded Scorpion unit. And in some cases, he says they had an incident with the same officers. He says most of his clients were initially pulled over for things like tinted windows or busted taillights. These are stops where they've made their mind up that they're pulling this vehicle over and they're going to stop it. They're going to find a reason. 
So a lot of those result in drug arrests. When officers make arrests at the scene, they are later considered witnesses if and when the case goes to trial. If that case were to go to trial or to a preliminary hearing, that officer will be called as a witness to testify. Um, at that point, the defense attorney, someone like myself, would come in and we would cross-examine that officer and their credibility could be called into question. Now, on top of the more than 30 cases that were dismissed, <coughs> the DA's office says there were also about 12 cases where charges were reduced. <laughs> Coming up at 10, we'll hear more from this attorney and why he says he's expecting to hear more people come forward to tell their experiences with these five former Scorpion unit officers. That is Fox 13's Kayla Solomon reporting live downtown tonight. All right, guys. So we know now that if anything came out of the Tyree Nichols um, case, that um, it shed light on the activity. Yeah, that, just you know, terrible um, niggas. That's what it seems so, like. So, so in that situation, sounds like that a lot of people are going to get reduced charges or be set free due to their um their interaction uh resulting in their sentencing. Uh, from dealing with these uh, these cops. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad situation, but hopefully we'll come back and visit this whole situation with the Goon Squad and we'll find that um, Mr. Uh, Brian Bailey has been removed from his position and they'll find something that they can actually uh, stick, uh, 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 a charge. That can stick to him, but right now, you know, he's been untouchable in in this situation. Yeah, he's, he still he's, has he's very job. elusive. He's very elusive, Brian Bailey. I don't. Yeah, he, I don't know. want him turning all those. Yes. Very cops and everything. So I don't think it's about him he being probably elusive to me. I just feel like he's he's being protected by the yeah, and yeah, he's, he's, he's a, a proud popper. He's a proud father watching all his sons do dirty deeds and he taught them all how to do it. They're going to grow up just to be just like them. It's a pattern. So it's happening in Memphis. It's happening in Mississippi. Um, Gregory, is it happening anywhere else? Yes, it is. It's happening in L.A. It's happening everywhere. All right, everywhere so we got it. Yeah, it's been yeah, yeah. Down, down city. We got one more video. I repeat. Play, we play that, one? LA. Yes, we do. Yes, right. we do. All right, you know let's, let's, see that, let's see that last, now, let's see that last video. <coughs> see if we can make sense of this. Yeah, what you can definitely believe that. It's going on anywhere and everywhere. It's just some things is not being magnified or recorded. That's all it is. Press of Inspector up. General comes yeah. after years of accusations of deputy gangs within the department. KTLA's Rachel Metatop has more on the investigation and the consequences those deputies could face if they don't comply. And dozens of L.A. County Sheriff's deputies have been ordered to show their tattoos and be interviewed about alleged gang ties. The investigation by the Office of Inspector General comes after years of accusations of deputy gangs within the department. KTLA's Rachel Metatop has more on the investigation and the consequences those deputies could face if they don't comply. Hi, good evening. Lock Failing to up. cooperate with this investigation could impact the deputy's employment status. That's according to a letter sent to 35 LASD deputies. They've been asked to come in for an interview and to bring photos of any tattoos they have that might link them to <laughs> one of two notorious deputy gangs. LA County Sheriff Robert Luna is ordering his deputies to submit to interviews with the Office of Inspector General related to deputy gang affiliation. He says deputy personnel are required to provide full, complete, and truthful statements. 
So far, 35 deputies have received one of these letters. In it, the OIG writes that it's conducting witness interviews to establish membership in the banditos and executioners, which it says are exclusive, secretive, and may qualify as law enforcement gangs. Investigators ask the recipient to bring a photo of any tattoos that might resemble these images, and they'll be asked about its origin. Deputy unions, though, are expressing concerns. The president of the Association for Los Angeles Deputy Sheriffs tells us in a statement, quote, we remain concerned about various aspects of this investigation and the manner in which Mr. Huntsman apparently intends to go about it. As we'd like to think the basic rights afforded individuals by the Constitution don't vary from profession to profession. Sheriff Luna has long promised to take action against deputy gangs. In February, he announced the creation of the Office of Constitutional Policing. This new office will be tasked with helping to eradicate all deputy gangs from this department Mm -hmm. And this office will help improve our policies, procedures, and operations to ensure this department is engaging in constitutional practices. Luna's decision is a stark departure from the rules put in place by his predecessor, Alex Villanueva, who long denied the existence of gangs or cliques within the department. He took to Instagram, critical of the inspector general for moving forward. I told uh, Max Huntsman to pound sand. We gave him all the information that we had available. We're not going to create things for him. And we took action on every complaint of misconduct, every single one. He was apprised of every lot. single investigation we did and the results. There was nothing incomplete, but now he claims that it was all incomplete. And these meetings will be recorded and the deputies will have a chance to bring an attorney with them. They also have the option to plead the fifth. But even if they do that, they can be called to make a statement at a later time. That's the very latest downtown. I'm Rachel Menatoff, KTLA 5 News. Hmm. See, that is the goddamn problem. They Why aren't they being indicted they or brought up on recall charges? They got these fucking unions that's always sticking their neck out for these damn crooked cops and whatnot. And somehow they they get them motherfuckers off on on this thing. This is what the problem is, you know, and 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 the reason why they they now are saying, wait a minute, hold on, he can't do that. Oh, he's going to mess up our whole operation and this and that. So because he he's talking about uh, starting uh, 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 their um, investigation, investigation for, for, you know, to get rid of these people that's in the damn crooked cops that's in the damn, you know, that's not following the protocols to what they're supposed to be doing. Then get rid of them. And and I think that's a good idea. You know, make sure you up on top of uh, your officers and get rid of the ones who's going to uh, bring bad press to you. I, I, the I predecessor mean, was the ringleader. That's why he's a big Exactly, Tom. That's what I said. He's I, I, I agree to a certain extent because... Let me tell you why it's a double-edged sword. So tattoos is a fashion statement, right? And, and you know, you got some people they put tattoos on them because they like freedom of speech. You, That's you, what you they're got, gonna do. Other people they put tattoos on because they want to represent something. And and now, okay, we're 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 hoping that in doing this, this is going to weed out the corrupt, right? They, they, they mock their bodies. These are signs of their members of gangs and stuff like this. But that's what, what happens, gangs do. What happens to the others that are smart enough and more coy to um, not do this and they're still active members of the police department like um, Memphis, um, excuse me, like um, excuse me, Mississippi. We don't know if they got any identifying tattoos. But I think they should use that same type of um approach when dealing with these individuals, minus the arm um, tattoos. I don't think they're wearing SWAT stickers. Um, now let me don't be so quick to say that because we don't know what they are um sporting um down there under their uniform. Okay. I, I think that they should implement that that mindset. But if all you're looking for is tattoos, I think you're gonna come up short. 
it's it's like a witch hunt, and you might end up on basically. What what is what do that? Do, 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 do that not, don't have no warm deep. No no what no. Do fire. that mean? That and that makes everybody sense. Everybody in the everybody in the goddamn that's supposed to be a part of this squad. Every last that's one of them all got the same goddamn tattoo. Oh, yeah, you know about they're you know they're clear. You know they're, they're deputies. They're sheriffs. So uh, well, the we... people underneath them is running in the gang, and all these people are running a certain section of their city or, or state or whatever they're in. You get what I'm saying? So right. first, it's a first. lot of people down the line that's probably involved with this whatever they got the, going on that connect this, with the other people. This is not the first time the police department in any state has been um, uh, accused of being a gang. They've been saying this for uh, about 20, 30 years now that um, the police department is the biggest gang in, um, in the world. And there might be some truth to that. Now, um, there are again, there are uh, some bad apples that um, they are rotting the whole goddamn bag. One, mm, they say one bad apple don't spoil the whole bunch, but I don't know if it's going that's, rotten. That's a goddamn is, lie. And the worm is just eating through all the apples and stuff. In this situation, I, I um, so let me say this to you guys because we getting close to our end of time. Bishop, um, <laughs> he spoke of a something similar to this. He talked about a weed that grows up right alongside a flower. It gets all the nurturing, the sunlight, the water, the love and stuff that the flower gets. But oh, its wow. intention is to choke the life out of that's the flower. flower, right? So I think in this situation, that's that could be um the same situation in a lot of these police departments too. There are some good cops do their job, but unfortunately, you got these deviants, these despicable individuals that get far too much press and in, in, in um coverage. So you make others look bad. But again, Mississippi, because this is an ongoing situation, yeah, I feel like that. Maybe they need to what they call it disband, disfunk the police department down there, period. Because um again, y'all, that is a KKK country. There's a lot of card carrying proud members of, of, of that um community that practice that that mindset. So again, these are the overseers have been given new uniforms. Now they got badges. They don't just got whips now. They got guns. You, you're giving them a license to kill. What's their favorite target? People of color. So again, when 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 you find that you have an environment, this um, you know, this is normal practice for them. I again, like I said in the beginning of the show, I am not surprised. As to what's going on in Mississippi, um, I, I like I said, stay tuned because I feel like there's going to be more. And if I had any advice to give to any of those victims that came in contact with any of those um uh, units, be it the Scorpion unit, the um the the Goon Squad, or any of the other ones, if if you are blessed enough to survive and encounter with those people, move. Leave while you got your while you got your life because they already stopped trying to kill you and they ain't done. I feel like if, if given a second chance, they are going to finish what they started. Um, uh, let me get you guys' uh views and then we're gonna end the show. Um, and I want you to be brief. Patsy, um, what do you think is needed to um ward off this bad behavior in Mississippi and other places? pertaining to the cops, what do you think that um they need to implement to, to stop this? Um fire the behinds, bring in the middle and mail it and switch it over from that silly city um police and to the military police and for X amount of years and retrain and rethink 
these people's mindsets on how to deal with uh, police in the, the community in a proper way and do not rehire the same people that were in position beforehand. Okay, sounds like a good idea. Um, Tanya, you're next and then Timmy. What do I think needs to happen? Yeah. I think that they need to have a, um, the same way they have a, a sex offender registry, they need to have a bad cop registry. And they need to get rid of the qualified immunity. Oh. All right, TV, you're up. Have a unit investigate. Only answer? Yeah. All right, Sean, you're up. I like what Tanya said. Um, they can get rid of that um that immune that um you know that uh um, God I just on the tip of my tongue, she just said it. Um, um, that he get, yeah, if they can get immunity. Yes, ma'am. If they can get rid of that, and if when these lawsuits come about and the state no longer takes on responsibility for the cops' mistakes, and the cops actually have to be accountable for the things that they do, I think there'll be a change in how they go about doing things because there's really no repercussions for what they mm -hmm. do. And yeah, then the culture first. itself, the culture itself in those states have to change as far as, you know, the black and white and that has to change in itself. Once that whole mentality and the, and the way of the South has been put to bed, then I think you'll start seeing the change. Okay, good answer. Maria, you up next. Marie, you still, still with us? Got to take your phone off and mute. I'm not seeing it. All right, let's go to Gregory. Uh, because this is a sundown type topic with those type of cities, I always believe in an eye for an eye sometimes. So with the, with the whole raping thing, I feel like those officers should be cash rated or raped for a long time. They will if they go to jail. That so that's your that's your answer. Your no, but answer? with the no with the sundown city thing, I was gonna say they need to do something to make those people uncomfortable, especially if you know that these people have been getting away with racist things, racist crimes. You create a you create a task force that's gonna watch over them. That's all black. You're gonna weed them out. You're gonna weed out the people that you know are racist. Off the rip because you know that they're not going to be able to be controlled by these black officers that are coming in to watch over them. They're not going to want to give their badge up or get their weapon up or change the duties that they're already doing, become a mall cop or some shit like that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of change needs to happen. That's all. All right. Um, Maria, I'm gonna come. Maria, is still with us? I'm trying to give you another chance. Nah, Maria, yeah, yeah. All, right. All right, let's go She's to Duchess. Kiana. You want to um give us your final word on this? Um, I think that once a department has so many cases, I just think the Fed should automatically step in. Like it, it, it's insane. It's insane that these people are still in regards, I mean, still living their lives, having their jobs, you got case after case after case after case. What, what job does that? Um, so I think that's one thing. Um, I also believe that if, if, you know, again, I feel like a, if a deterrent would be if there were if you saw a true um, consequence 
these people are not getting real consequences for their actions. So they are immune to, they, they feel invincible. They can do whatever they want. And anybody around them who's watching them feels the same. So the solution is, is ugh, there's so many that need to be taking place because it's, again, it's been going on for years. Um, Definitely there, I believe there is, but I don't know if it's uh, nationwide a registry of police who can no longer, once they've been, you know, they have a, any type of um, serious cause for them not to be a police officer in one county or state, they're not able to um, be in another state. Again, I don't know if that's nationwide. I do know that's that what they should do. The state has do that yeah. too. But they should have one um, nationwide. Um, there's there's so many things. I only named like two, but there's plenty more. But we don't have time for that. Okay, Mr. Brimich, you want to take us home? They say in Mississippi, this is supposed to be. They say, thank God for Mississippi. What they need to be thinking is some of the courage from the black people or the victims themselves from stepping up and putting some of these terrible stories out there. I think the most important thing they can do down there is cleanse their law system, their police departments, if it's the government or state buildings, cleanse it thoroughly and try to start over with people that care about the people in the streets or in the communities. Don't just beat them and rape them but truly try to take care of them the righteous way. The godly way. God, yeah. All right, so. Break the rapists, kill the killers. Break the hurdles. Right, right, let's, let's end this on a, on a positive note. All right, um, let me just say this. This was a very, you know, deep topic and you guys handle it with care. And I'll just say this. Um, one man's privilege does not give you the right to uh, treat your neighboring village badly. That's that's just what I'm gonna say. Your, any privilege you have does not give you the right to harm uh, anyone from a neighboring village. That's it. This has been the Still a Man podcast. Thank you guys for coming. See you next week. God bless you all.